So I can't remember the last time I finished a book. Um, it doesn't mean I haven't been reading. I've been reading a lot. However, uh, for whatever reason, I've been in the middle of like three massive fucking novels for months, it feels like. And I know it actually has been months. Um, I think the last book I finished was the new Haruki Murakami book that I got as a advanced reader copy. But that was a long time ago at this point. It's been so long that the actual book is almost out. <laughs> because I've been sort of trapped in this, like, you know, tome purgatory for a while, I figured it might be a good idea to make a video about the books that I'm looking forward to reading after I get myself out of book prison. Self-inflicted book prison, you know? Like, I could stop reading these books if I wanted to, but I've decided that I'm going to finish them because they are good. But I'd really like to move on to something shorter, or at least something else entirely. I'm in the middle of The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, The Veiled Throne by Ken Liu, and Shogun uh, Part 2 by James Clavell. All incredibly well done, expansive fantasy series that, I don't know, it's like three really intense worlds to get lost in, so... Even though it's been great, it's also like between, if you count both parts of Shogun, it's, I don't know, 3,500 pages that I've been stuck in for a long time. <laughs> and I don't read that fast. I know some people on BookTube are just like flying through shit and they can do like a weekly reading update where they talk about the three books they finished in one week. I'm not one of those people. I'm not by any means like a slow reader, but like, I don't, I don't know. I'm tired, guys. I got a job. I got other things going on. And uh, I read when I can. Without any further ado, uh, I've got five books here that I wanted to go through that I'm highly anticipating and really looking forward to reading. And if you've read them, please tell me about them and your experience with them. First on the list is The Galaxy and the Ground Within by Becky Chambers. Um, this is the fourth book in her Wayfarer series of books that start with The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, and then it's two sequels, and then this is the fourth one. If I remember correctly, this caps off that run of books, and I've really enjoyed the three leading up to it. It's like kind of cozy, low-stakes sci-fi is how I would put it. Like, the world building's really cool. All of the sort of, like, aliens and, like, space technology is all there. But it's also just, like, about people and, like, their relationships with each other. Like, there's nothing particularly, like, earth-shattering or any other planet uh, going on in these books. So I'm kind of yearning for something like that. And the cool thing about these books too, is each one of them is kind of its own little like bottle episode within this series. Like there's some characters that cross over from book to book, but for the most part, it's kind of its own new adventure with new characters every single time. After I read the first book, I was a little disappointed because I really liked those characters and I wanted to see what would happen with them. But you get to know and grow to love those new characters with each book. So Becky Chambers has never let me down before. She also wrote the Monk and Robot series, which I've talked about on this channel before. So really looking forward to this one. I'll get to it when I'm 85 years old. The next book on the list is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I've never read an Andy Weir book before. I had a copy of The Martian a long time ago when I really wasn't much of a reader, but I had like gone through some weird part of my life and I was like, I'm gonna read now. And I went to Barnes and Noble and for whatever fucking reason, I decided to buy The Martian and like Hillary Clinton's biography. <laughs> and I didn't read either of them. And I don't know if you've seen like Team America World Police, but I also just took a Sharpie because Matt Damon was on the cover of the book and I just wrote Matt Damon on his forehead because uh, they kind of just say his name a lot in that movie, like Matt Damon. So that's about as far as my experience goes with reading Andy Weir. I have seen the movie of The Martian, which was great. Um, I've heard even better things about this one. I know they're turning this into a movie with Ryan Gosling. It's being directed by, oh, who are those fucking dudes? Uh, it's like on the tip of my tongue. They've been involved with like Brooklyn Nine-Nine and the 21 Jump Street movies and Lego movies, I think. And also like across the Spider-Verse. Lord and Miller. Chris Miller, Phil Lord. I think that's it. Anyway, they're really fun directors. Um, they've made a lot of good movies and I don't know, that has me even more interested in this book because like the tone of those guys is 
projects are like pretty wacky and looking at this it doesn't really scream wacky so either they're gonna like completely fuck up the source material or this is gonna be way more fun than i kind of imagined it would be so yeah it's been on my shelf for a while i do this thing sometimes where i'll like get it in my head like i, I need to read this book i need to buy it today and then it sits on my shelf for like eight months. Um, and that was definitely the case with this. I was like so pumped to read it. And then I realized I had to read the other books that I had already started. So this one coming soon, hopefully. The next one on my list is Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. This is the first book in the Expanse series of books. Um, this wasn't something that was like super on my radar for a long time. But then um, that channel book reviews kill talked about it a bunch and was like really really into it and i've seen like the first couple episodes of the show so yeah i'm gonna give it a try um i know i just got out of like or i am about to get out of some really long fucking books and i don't think this is like a step in the right direction if i'm trying to read smaller books my alarm set off in the middle of me filming that so hopefully it didn't fuck it up too much um but anyway, I'm, like, likely going to finish The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson soon. There's fucking four other books in that series. It's, like, another 4,000 pages of uh, Stormlight Archive content that I will get to at some point. But this is waiting in the wings for me. I, frankly, lean a lot more into sci-fi than I do fantasy. I loved fantasy when I was a kid. Um, I read all the Harry Potter books. I read Narnia. But I never really read a whole lot of, like, grown-up fantasy until like the last couple years um thank you kate if you're watching this um and i've gotten really into it and i like it but i still like at my core am more of a sci-fi nerd than anything else um i don't know when i was a kid i really liked that will smith movie i robot i'm sure it's not actually very good but like that was weirdly kind of one of the things that got me into sci-fi as like a youngster that and like my grandpa just being like a giant science fiction nerd <laughs> um he recommended this book to be called pass through tomorrow by robert heinlein heinlein's weird politics aside it's an incredible book it's like this whole future history of short stories and uh yeah shout out my grandpa for just having impeccable taste in books forever um he's retired now so he just reads like a book a day basically just what a king Anyway, Leviathan Wakes, uh, really looking forward to it. I really liked uh, some of the show that I saw. I was kind of like detective-y, and there's like a mystery going on, but there's also like space politics. Like, that shit sounds awesome. Yeah, I'd kind of just rather be in space right now than on Earth. So we're going to give it a try sometime from now. Fourth on my list and second from the last is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This is a sequel to a book called Strange the Dreamer that, again, thank you, Kate, for that recommendation. Uh, that first book is really, really fucking good. And it is fantasy, but... And frankly, it's like it's kind of YA. Like, it, it reads a little YA, but it's, it's just a little hint of it. Like, it still feels like a, a book that anyone could enjoy. It's been a while since I've read it, but it's really beautiful. Like, the language in which it's written and fantasy concepts of it are pretty novel um i haven't really read anything particularly like it especially with the sort of like the aesthetic of the book and like the physical descriptions of everything that's going on i really enjoyed it and again i finished that one i was like i need to read the next one immediately i bought this like two apartments ago almost it was really one apartment ago, but I bought this a long fucking time ago, and I still haven't read it. And the nice thing is it's only a two-book series, so this is it. Like, if I really want to feel a sense of accomplishment and not like, oh my god, I still have 4,000 pages left to read of, like, whatever I'm getting myself into, this is not a bad place to go. So this, along with uh, Galaxy and the Ground Within, um, might bring me a sense of, like, book satisfaction that I've been missing for a little while so i don't know i my girlfriend's really into this book and i'm sure it has some super fans elsewhere too so if you've read this if you've read strange the dreamer let me know your thoughts because i find it very pleasant last thing on my list is children of time by adrian tchaikovsky uh if you look closely you can see that i've read a lot of it already um this was kind of just like the sacrifice that I made when I decided to start a million really long books at once. 
This one's really not even that long, like it looks kind of thick, but if you open up the pages, there's like not actually that many words on them. I will get back to this in time. Um, I don't want to spoil too much about it, but like giant, super smart spider civilization, that's all you need. That's the hook. <laughs> Um, I've really enjoyed this so far. It's very, it's like very sci-fi. I don't want to get into it too much, but it spends a lot of time on this like spider civilization and like sort of how it progresses from generation to generation. And there's also kind of like some horror elements to it too. Like it kind of reminds me of Alien in a way, which I fucking love. Um, if you haven't seen Alien Romulus, like I know it's out of theaters, but go see it anyway. Go hold the movie theater hostage and demand that they play Alien Romulus on the screen so you can watch it. If you're into that kind of thing, you'll really love this. Um, and I've really loved the first, I don't know, 150 pages of it that I've read. Really looking forward to getting back into this one. This might be like the very next one I get into once I finish Way of Kings and The Veiled Throne and Shogun. I will say though, even though I've got this like nice stack of books here to look forward to, uh, we've got sci-fi, 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 fantasy, sci-fi. I'm seeing a pattern here. Frankly, I haven't read just like a piece of like fiction in a while. Just some like normal people doing normal things, living life, getting into quagmires and quandaries within their simple human existences. If you have any recommendations that have to do with just regular people, uh, no crazy science, no crazy fantasy. I'd love some recommendations. I'm trying to start a book club with one of my friends right now who like is kind of genre averse. Like she just wants to read something straight. So if you have any ideas, let me know. I do have some stuff on the shelf back here that you could fit into that category, but, uh, yeah, looking for something new, something unexpected, something that will take me by storm. So yeah, that's it. Those are the five books I'm looking forward to reading after I finish this slog of fucking tomes that I'm in. On the good news front, I am like yay far, like really, really close to Velicor Ventures being monetized on YouTube. Woo! Uh, yeah, I'll be really happy when that happens. It's been more than four years of me putting work into this and like really within the last 12 months, like putting a lot of effort into it. And it's cool to see that it's grown that much, especially lately. Um, so whether you're new to the channel, whether you're old to the channel, um, I really appreciate you watching. And it's really cool to have built a community on here and to have a place to speak my mind and give myself a voice. And I don't know, you seem to enjoy it. So I'm going to keep doing it. That's all for me today. Um, it's Sunday. I hope you have a good week. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.